Pearson. Nate Pearson of the Toronto Blue Jays is joining us on the line after his debut on Wednesday. Nate, what will you be watching this weekend, man? You're, you're going to be a fan like the rest of us. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I'm going to be uh, watching some baseball with the, with the boys in, uh, here in D.C. when we're, we're chilling here for the next couple of days. What, what was it? I mean, people here, and I know that you guys have been in Washington the entire time, but people here have been talking near nonstop about your debut and how well the Jays came out of the gate. Let's talk about your debut for a second. What, what was it like to get out there and, and make your first big league start and do it the way you did it? Yeah, you know, it, it was a dream come true, you know, um, not not being able to have my my family and friends in the stands uh uh stunk a little bit but you know there i felt all the support i knew that everyone was watching and everything and i just uh just wanted to give my best shot uh to the to show the blue jays fans what's what's coming in the next few years with this young group we got nate pearson of the jays here on tim and sid uh nate correct me if i'm wrong forgive me i've been wrong a bit lately your family was at a hotel in dc uh just a few blocks away watching is that is that where they were Yes, they're uh, they're here in town. They're watching from the hotel. And what was it, what was it like seeing them afterwards? What was it, what was that interaction like? Uh, it was it was emotional. You know, my my mom was crying, so it made me cry just seeing her all emotional. And then my dad, you know, he's he's put so much effort and just so many sacrifices, all the lessons for me growing up, and just to be be able to share that moment with them was 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 everything. It was awesome. I know it's not quite the same, but they were there because they're not far from home in Dunedin for your for your spring debut when you had it in Dunedin. What, like your dad called that phenomenal. What, what did Pop say after this one? He, he was just saying you're amazing. Like you're you're a stud, and uh, all the hard work's paying off. Um, he just so many emotions going going through. He was he was just very proud of me, and uh, it was a great feeling. Nate Pearson of the Toronto Blue Jays here on Tim and Sid. Nate, when you went back into the dugout when you were done your fifth inning, it was apparent you were done for the night because uh, everyone was laughing. Like it was just it was one pat on the back after another. Pete Walker and Montoya. What 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 were they saying to you when you when you walked down the steps? They were just saying great job. Like they they didn't expect anything less. Like they're just they're just pumped to finally have me up there because you know I've been. It's been three years since I got on the org and uh, been on that prospect list for three years. And they're all just talking about how, the, how bad they want me up there. And I finally got my shot. And they're all just uh, proud. And just everyone was was happy that we we're in a good place, that we were, we were winning some games, and uh, that we were, we're ready to go this season. What you, uh, you admitted? Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Sid. I, I was, I was going to ask, what, what surprised you in the moment on the mound that maybe you weren't expecting? Uh, just, uh, just taking the moment to realize that I'm pitching against the, the reigning national champs, you know, like the world series champs and, uh, Trey Turner, my first at bat or first uh, guy I face. And it's just like, it's, it's Trey Turner, the shortstop, you know? So it's like, it's, it's not in the minor leagues anymore where you don't really know the guys you're facing, you know? So every guy that came up there, I, I've heard of and knew of. So it's, it was pretty cool. You admitted that there were some nerves in Boston. W- was it different in Washington? I kind of feel like I got all my nerves out in Boston. Like I felt like that was honestly my my big league debut, and, and Fenway and uh, facing their A lineup in, in Boston, and with Eddie Martinez and uh, and all of them. So you know, I kind of feel like I got it all out in that first inning there, and then I settled in after after the first rocky inning in, in Boston, and then. I came into this outing and I, I knew I was probably gonna have the same nerves, but like once I got out there and started uh, competing, it all went away and it was just like a normal, normal game for me. Nate Pearson of the Toronto Blue Jays here on Tim and Sid. Nate, I was watching MLB Network for most of that day leading up, and every time they brought you up, first off, it was in glowing terms, and secondly, they mentioned 103, 104 in every sentence. It was Nate Pearson. <laughs> he can hit 103, 104. How, how? <laughs> How tempting was it for you to get out there knowing full well the baseball world knows where how how deep you can you can reach in terms of speed to pull out what like a 103 and just 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 give everyone a bit of a show. Yeah, you know, so uh, I knew I probably wasn't going to be able to 
hit that uh, that famous number like I did uh, in the past, just because you know, fresh into the season, still kind of building up. But uh, you know, I just wanted to show off my my secondary stuff, man, because like I'm I'm known for my my heater, my fastball, and and it was good that it was good in my debut. But what I really showed is that I can pitch, man, and I can I can throw with my slider, I can throw my change, I can throw my curveball, I can throw everything at these guys, and that's kind of what I wanted to show. It's funny you talk about that a lot. Do, do so many does it does it affect your mindset when so many people just want to talk 103, 104, and you know as a kid that grew up loving baseball that pitching is more important than the 103, 104, even though the 103, 104 is real nice to have. Like, does it does it alter your mindset? Like, I'm a pitcher, man. I'm a pitcher. Yeah, you know, so when, when I got into the minor leagues, it was I was still like crazy about velo, and like I still am. Like I love that I throw hard. It's a it's a big part of my game. Yeah. But once I got into the pro ball, I realized like I can't just just throw hard. Like I gotta be able to pitch, and if I want to be a Hall of Famer, I gotta I gotta get some secondary stuff that's just as good as my heater, and that's what I pride myself in. That's what I worked for, and uh, so I want to kind of not eliminate the just the stigma of just like oh man he goes hard like i i wanted people to to say that oh man he's so gross he's nasty like he's seen that slider he's seen that, that curveball change up like i wanted them to be talking about my whole arsenal not just my heater it, it's funny because you mentioned hall of fame if i want to be a hall of famer I've been, I've been so impressed with your mental game i've heard stories uh being told about your mental game like is that the goal do you realize how good you can be yeah, I mean, I know, I know, I have a shot uh, to be great, and uh, the way I think about it, the way my my mentality is so good, is because I just I know the opportunity that I have, and I'm not gonna blow it. You know, I'm not gonna do anything stupid. Like I'm gonna focus on my craft and just try to get better each outing and do everything I can to keep learning and not be closed minded and always adapt and uh, change my routine when I need to. Uh, you know, just not get so fixated on on one one outcome or one routine and just get comfortable. You know, you got to keep pushing the limits. You got to keep striving for greatness. Nate, I think it's gross that you just said, I need a secondary hall of fame pitch. Like that's, <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad Tim kind of, kind of focused on it because that, I think that's what separates. And Tim and I talk about this all the time. You, that's not the mentality. A lot of 23 year olds have, I mean, we've seen enough 23 year olds coming through the majors. They're like, you know, they want to stay at, in the fourth spot. They want to be in the rotation for a while. They want to prove you're telling us you, you, you have a different mentality about what you can do in this game than some other young kids. Yeah. I mean, I guess I just understand the the opportunity and the shot that I have, you know, like it's, uh, if I have a 10, 10 to 15 year career, you know, I want to make the most out of it. You know, I'm not going to be able, be able to throw hard and, uh, be able to pitch my whole life you know i got a limited opportunity here in uh the next decade or so so i'm trying to just trying to make the most out of it just seize the opportunity do you know where you get that perspective from because i don't like listen both sid and i have been in the business even though we sound like young pops and we're young hip and edgy (laughs) we've been in the business for a while yeah we've been here for about 20 years and that perspective to me i oftentimes say that that perspective is usually expensive uh, because you have to go through some bleep to get that perspective. Do you know where you got that perspective at such a young age? Yeah, I think it, when I first got uh, injured and I had surgery my junior year of high school and I missed playing baseball for a whole year, and I kind of realized, like, you know, like if I want to stay healthy, if I want to make it, I got to I gotta work harder than anyone. And it really, it really learned, I really learned a lot being 17 and just creating that mindset that no matter what happens, like I'm, I got to keep persevering. I got to keep going and, uh, and just get obsessed with the craft of learning how to get better. You know, if I struggle one outing, okay, what did I struggle on? What can I do to make that better? Who can I talk to, to help me get an edge or who, what coach can I go to, you know, what player can I talk to that does that really well? Let me play catch with him. Um, and just pick his brain. You know, it's just all about learning and adapting. Nate Pearson of the Toronto Blue Jays here on Tim and Sid. Uh, during your start, Nate, I got a I got a text from someone who was just gushing, and I texted back, and the Jays have until 2026. And he went, "Well, that's a long time." Now I know the reason for that is because 
you were held back for service time issues, and it's a reality of baseball, and a lot of young players have to deal with it. What is your perspective on that in hindsight? Because it was only a week, but you're a competitor, and you know you belong. How pissed off were you that happened? You know, they uh, they told me when I was uh, going to start, and uh, I think Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday after my start in Fenway, they, they told me I got the sixth game of the season, so I kind of did the math. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, right after the, the service time date, you know, it's kind of just chuckling. But, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm glad that they just told me up front, look, you got the sixth game of the season. And, like, they didn't tell me, like, we're doing it because of service time. Obviously, they can't do that. But, you know, it's, whether that that's the reason or not, like, I was, I'm going to be in the big leagues. And I, I wouldn't have to wait a month like it would in the, if, it was, if this was a full season. So right. I don't have to go to trip back to trip play, like, I, I put on the work in, during this quarantine time, and they saw that, and they're like, "All right, well, we're still gonna keep his service time, whatever, but we're gonna we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna call him up right after that day." And I'm lucky that it's, that it's only been a week, so I was just I was just glad to hear that they're gonna give me the ball. I gotta ask about uh, the fans in the stands. Like I know you mentioned high school and missing the year in, in high school. Like I'm, you probably had more folks at your last Bishop McLaughlin start than were in Washington. Never mind this whole global pandemic thing. Like, did that affect you at all on the field, or are you able to just zone in and it's you versus the hitter? Yeah, we're me and uh, some of the starters on the team. We're actually just talking about that. Like, once you get once you start facing hitters in the in the season and in the game, like you forget that fans aren't even there. Like. You, you would think that you would notice. But, I mean, they got the fan noise going. Like, you don't really pay attention to it. But at the end of the day, you're so locked in on the catcher and, like, getting batters out and, like, performing and just competing that you, you forget that there's no fans there. And uh, I think that, I mean, that's just kind of a good thing. It just shows that, like, our mentality at the pitching staff, is we're just so locked in on getting outs. And I, I think that's pretty cool. Nate Pearson, the Jays are on Tim and said, your start Wednesday – if memory serves, that's technically the Jays' first home game of the season. Um, I, I anticipate you starting a few home openers in your career for this organization before you're done. Does 45,000 people watching you add to your velo? Like, what will that do to your stuff? <laughs> it definitely will just give me more uh, adrenaline, you know. Uh, definitely see the, the velo pick up there in the later innings as well. But, uh, yeah, just feeding off that crowd energy is, is electric. Hey, before we let you go, Nate, I got to ask, you were talking about talking about some of the starters out there and some of the pictures about the crowd. Like, what are the boys saying about the the mini all-star break that you find yourselves in? I think it was Davey Martinez who coined it the all-star break uh, a little early. Like, this is all a little different for pros, like maybe not for NCAA or or JUCO players to get, you know, the four days off again. Like, what are the boys saying about this kind of unexpected layoff? You know, that we really don't know what to think about it, man. Cause like we can't, we're not really thinking about it as an all-star break because we each got one start and then we're, <laughs> and then we're on a, you know, like a yeah. two day break. So it's like, no one really got to get their, get their feet, uh, wet. I mean, we each had one start, but that's, that's like nothing, man. Like we each only had three, like five innings and, you know, pitch counts were, we're still building up and you know, we're, we're all like 80 pitches and 90 pitches. And uh, I think we just we just want to get on a good routine. You know, obviously with this virus going around, we got to be careful. And uh, you yeah. see how it's still affecting us. You know, we we're not in a bubble, so we got to make sure our teammates are doing the right things and and just being safe. Just um, yeah, just you and the boys take care of yourselves. It was a treat to see yeah. out there Wednesday. We know there's other stuff going on here, but uh, again, a huge congratulations, Nate, uh, on Wednesday. I know there's a lot more to come from you, but uh, that was a big moment with your family not far and. Uh, and a lot of JCNs were really excited over that. We appreciate the time. Let's talk again soon. Thanks, man.